Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. On the intervening night of September 28th and 29th, 2016, Indian Army carried out surgical strikes against terror launch pads in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir just 11 days after the Uri attack, which had claimed the lives of 18 soldiers. The Army launched the attack targeting Pakistani terrorists positioned across the line of control. The then DGMO, Lieutenant General Ranbir Singh, had announced on September 29th that India had conducted surgical strikes on terror pads along the LOC using ground forces and inflicted significant casualties. We are in possession of the video clips of the surgical strike. These clips show some terrorists being killed besides destruction of bunkers and other military constructions. Lieutenant General D.S. Hudda retired, former Northern Army commander who was directly in charge of the surgical strikes, told the Indian Express newspaper that the videos are real. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will revisit the surgical strike of 2016. Joining me on the program today are Sheel Khan Sharma, former diplomat, Major General Ashwini Siwach, retired defence expert, and Rana Banerjee, former Special Secretary, Cabinet Secretariat. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of uh, The Big Picture. But before we uh, throw the discussion open to our panellists uh, in the studio and outside today, first let's take a look at what the footage we received looks like. Nearly 21 months after the Indian Army launched surgical strikes in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the government releasing in black and white the visuals of unprecedented operation. The footage was recorded by unmanned aerial vehicles using thermal imaging cameras. Some of it was captured by the cameras mounted on helmets of commandos. The video footage tells the story of how, on the intervening night of September 28th and 29th, 2016, para-commandos of the 4th and 9th battalions crossed the line of control 2 to 4 kilometers deep in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Separate teams targeted seven terror launch pads located in POK's Lepau Valley, Tadapani and Bimba areas. At the mapped locations, the commandos killed many terrorists, destroyed bunkers, military constructions and most importantly, makeshift buildings that housed the Pakistani terrorists before they infiltrated across the LOC. The operation was launched live by Director General Military Operations, Lieutenant General Ranbir Singh and National Security Advisor Ajit Duwal at the Northern Command Headquarters in Udhampur and in the South Block, Delhi. The commandos of the 4th and 9th Special Forces Battalions were later awarded gallantry medals. On September 29, 2016, Lieutenant General Ranbir Singh announced to the public the operation inflicted significant casualties on Pakistani Army. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let me now talk to my panelists about this footage itself and the surgical strike at large. General, I'd like to begin with you. Take us through the footage itself. What exactly is happening in this footage? What is this footage all about? And also, what is a surgical strike, really? You see, what has happened is that uh, Pakistani uh, terrorists had launched an attack on Udi on uh, just 10 days before this surgical strike where they have killed 19 of our soldiers. That is the time when the, in, the country decided that enough is enough, we have to take action. And thereafter, within 11 days of that, intervening night of 28th, 29th of September 2016, this surgical strike was launched. This surgical strike was launched on seven launch pads of, of Pakistan in POK. For your information, the launch pad is about two to four kilometers inside the line of control where the terrorists come, stay there for about four to seven days, wait for an opportunate movement to infiltrate inside Indian side. On the Pakistani side. On, the they board, are yes. on the Pakistani side and more often than not, they are located along with the Pakistan post so that they are also given a covering fire when the infiltration take place. And therefore, these are the one labor targets. On intervening of 28th, 29th September, the troops of uh, four special forces, nine para special forces, also Ghatak of Dogra and the Bihar unit has gone inside and hit them hard along these launch pad and destroyed, destroyed completely all the bunkers and killed almost 60 to 80 terrorists along with about 15 to 20 army men. 
This footage has been taken by the UAV which used thermal imaging. In addition to that, that a camera mounted on helmet also has thermal imaging which was worn by the commandos. They have also captured uh, these. The destruction of the bunker which has been shown has been done basically by 84 mm RR Carl Gustav. At the same time, uh, uh, basically ATGM, which is anti-tank uh, guided missile, which is laser guided to destroy the bunkers. Sure. When, when this action has taken place, that the seven uh, strike team which has gone, they managed to destroy that and then come back and fall back to Indian side without any casualty. One of these uh, POK terrorist camp which or launching pad was Dudniyal. This was place where opposite to that in Vachal sector, I also happened to command a brigade and I have seen this Dudniyal uh, launch pad through my uh, Loras and TOI. So uh, what I just want to convey is a very good action which was done. The message was sent to Pakistan that we mean business. Because when a surgical strike was conducted in Myanmar, Pakistan gave a nuclear bogey that Pakistan is not Myanmar. If you cross, we mean business. But Indian Army crossed and destroyed and killed 60 to 80 terrorists. The mute question is, why did not Pakistan react? The reasons are two very obvious. One is... You know, General, we'll get into the reasons and why Pakistan has not reacted. But let me get in the other panelists Absolutely. as well so that we can discuss this issue a little more in detail. You know, uh, Ambassador uh, Shilkan Sharma, why is such a big deal made out of this surgical strike? Uh, well, you know, it had to be uh, broadcast. Why? Uh, because it was uh, done stealth with, with a measure of stealth successfully. It was done when we observed that these launch pads were there and these terrorists were ready to enter. So it was to preempt them and to, to destroy their uh, plants and their bunkers. And the whole exercise was done in the dark of night with considerable uh, finesse and our, our special forces were in, in the action. So the combined message of that is such that even today Pakistanis, as they are wont, are refusing to recognize that. They, they, they are denying it. Now, when Pakistan denies something, it is a clear indication that it has happened. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and as uh, the general mentioned, uh, after the URI attack, it was a very fitting uh, kind of a message to them that, look, you know, enough is enough. Uh, yeah. So, the, uh, when you revisit, revisit it uh, after two years, uh, you should see the perspective in which we try to you see the whole, we tried diplomacy, we tried reaching out, but still they did not uh, budge from their dire actions or their diabolical plans, and which were indicative in URI and before that uh, uh, also. So this is the other side, we have to take this action. And revisiting it after two years is again to show that uh, to, to dispel first the kind of, uh, you know, our democracy has a lot of uh, noise and a lot of uh, contention uh, about everything that happens and everything is politicized. But this was an action by, by, done by the army in, uh, in response to something which was uh, uh, the audacious uh, Pakistani attack on Yuri. And we have done it caref you know, carefully with stealth and successfully. Sure. So we should see it in this kind of a light. Indeed. Okay. It was a victory as far as India is concerned. It was the right thing to do is what the ambassador is suggesting. Mr. Banerjee, you know, as far as this particular action itself is concerned, the ambassador and the general have both said that there was no other option. This was the only option left as far as India is concerned because of the terror attacks that were carried out on Indian soil. That having been said, should the issue have been politicized in the first place? It's an army operation at the end of the day. And should the footage have been made available to the public? See, by all accounts, this was a very successful action. And at that time, the grievances were very sore. The Uri attack was such a dastardly event that a repost so soon afterwards was very necessary and uh, it provided a very electric sort of a message, which was also balm to, or solace to the uh, martyred uh, 
uh, the families of the martyred on the Indian side. I don't think anybody in India disputes that the surgical strikes happened. But what is intriguing now, of course, is the timing of uh, the release of the video now and why or should it at all have uh, a political sort of utilization. I mean, this is a question uh, which the government of the day has uh, taken a considered decision for whatever political reasons that they may have had. Uh, really speaking, um, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't be in a position to really comment on it. Indeed. You know, General, hats off to the Indian Army, the forces and everyone who was involved in carrying out this, you know, surgical strike, pinpoint attack really, as far as the Pakistanis are concerned. You know, we are miffed with everything that Pakistan has done in India and this had to be done. Absolutely. Talking about the operation itself, who was involved in the operation? And what kind of planning really goes into an operation like this? And how is it really carried out? Because you've been in the front line. You've seen all of this actually happening. That's why I'm asking you to take us through what exactly happens in an operation like this. You know, before this surgical strike which was carried out, there has been a myth that uh, such type of action has been taking place earlier also. Mm. Remember that there were action which was at a very lower level, which is called a tactical level, done by a local formation commander, Basically, a sort of a bad action if the Pakistani have done, we react on that area only, basically localized effect. Sorry, as to far cut as you short. Sorry to cut you short, but are you saying something like this has never happened before? What I'm saying at such a large scale. Hmm. You know, the point is that I'm just trying to convey that the operation before that which has taken place, we have crossed line of control, gone inside Pakistan, but they were shallow in nature. They are about to three to four hundred meters, and they are, uh, were tactical in nature. The advantage was accrued, and the commander, or local formation commander, has taken a decision. Whereas this has a national importance. It is a surgical strike which was done at a uh, frontage of almost 250 to 300 kilometer. Seven uh, launch pad was to strike together, and therefore, a lot of things were at stake. The prestige of the nation was at stake. Had this operation failed, you can imagine what could have been the repercussion of that. So therefore, this surgical strike was planned at the highest level, approved by at the highest authority which was there in the nation. And then training practice was carried out and special forces troops were utilized of four special forces and nine para -SF, in addition to a ghatak, which is just like a commando uh, unit of a platoon of both these two units. Dogra unit and Vihar, which where the soldiers were martyred in Udi, were also dovetailed to take a um, uh, you know pride to take a revenge. So, so this so, that so, is, so sorry to cut you short once again, but just to put it into perspective so that we understand exactly how the operations really work. Is there some kind of specialized training that is required to conduct an operation like this? What really goes into an operation like this? Absolutely correct. These are a specialized operation which can be done by a special forces only for two three reasons. One is they are trained. They are equipped and they are armed. And their training is in such a highest order, the physical, mental makeup is good. In addition to that, for almost about week, 10 days before, they were trained, they were mock up or made so that they know it when they will go to a, a objective that they will able to conduct it. In addition to that, they will given a lot of int and information about the target area. The target area where the launch pad was to be destroyed, the, the, the Raki was conducted. And, and how, do we, how did we obtain this, uh, you know? This, the... We could obtain from uh, unarmed vehicles, satellite, and also by some informer, which we have there. And therefore, we could get information about the target area, that is launch pad. We kept those target area after getting information, some sort of surveillance. And thereafter, once we have gone it, we found it exactly the same which we have planned it. And this strike was carried out by, by the lethal weapons and like Carl Gustav. I'm sorry again yeah. to cut you short, but all this could have been done in a span of 10 days is what you're Absolutely suggesting. Absolutely because the special forces are trained for it. It is not training now. They are trained always and every time. It was only the specific target which was there. They have to be trained for that. Okay. So therefore, motivation level is very high. The training is very high. They are well equipped and well armed. You know, they had the best of the weapon in the world. And they are the best of the troops which are available. So therefore, we don't have to worry on that. And they have conducted this surgical strike without having any own casualty. Sure. And they have utilized 
the best of the weapon. And that is the Kar Gustav, point. anti-tank, guided missile, laser guided missile, and they could destroy the bunker. They sure. did not have to physically assault. Please understand that aim was to destroy and kill all the terrorists. Aim was not to occupy that. You know, there is a difference. Hmm. So therefore, that point has to be understood. It was fire assault. Fire assault from a distance. Destroy everything with your this thing and thereafter retrieve back. Point taken. In that 70 to 80 terrorists were killed and almost about 15 to 20 the fighting soldiers were also killed. Sure. Which Pakistan denied and you know after this operation was conducted before the DGMO could tell the nation the Pakistani were also informed ki that we have done a surgical strike you have a casualty please collect your dead bodies. Okay. Okay. Moot point being no casualties on our side and that's what we want at the end of the day. You know, Ambassador, as far as the Pakistani side is concerned, you know, it was done, the surgical strike was carried out to teach Pakistan a lesson for what Pakistan had done on our soil. Has anything changed as far as Pakistan is concerned after the surgical strike? You know, one important uh message by the surgical strike was that if Pakistan thought that after each of its audacious attacks, all that India would do is uh, register protests and, and uh, summon the High Commissioner and tell them and, uh, you know, and exercise diplomatic route, they were, and, and then they would uh, get away with tissue of lies, denial, you know, as they have been doing. In this case, we verified the presence of these chaps, as the general speaks very candidly, and we decided to take action and destroy them. So this was a message that, look, we try and talk to you peacefully to not to do this, but if you don't desist from this, then we have means to attack. So this is like, you know, what we say in Sanskrit, shathe shathyam, you know, for, to the, to the uh, wicked man, you use uh, all the force under your command to, to show him that wickedness will not work. So it's a kind of a, uh, and it was totally uh, operationally a, a success. And it is part of tactics that uh, you try and do everything. You try Sam Dam Dand Bhed, you try and talk to them peacefully, but they, they think they can lie their way off. You try and, uh, you know, speak to diplomatic community internationally, they try and lie them off. Then they obtain some. Uh, supporters uh, here and there who say they are also victims of terrorism, but they can continue to do terrorism against us from their uh, launch pads. So we find launch pads and destroy them. So I think we should see it in this kind of a perspective. And, and, and uh, the, the whole thing is, uh, now they say, why are you doing it now? The timing, you see, just a month, it's not even a month since we declared a ceasefire in Kashmir, and it was a uh, you know, it was uh, done with the DGMOs uh, talking together. But what happened after that? Sujat Bukhari was killed, and we now know that uh, LET was involved in that. And, you know, the, 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 these things have not stopped. So I think uh, to, to again explain this kind of a thing in facts is, to, uh, is also to, I think, re-emphasize the message which was given two years back. Sure. This, is how, this is how I see it. Sure. You know, Mr. Banerjee, uh, the main aim of the surgical strike was to dismantle the terror havens in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to deal a major blow to the terror launch pads in POK. Have we successfully managed to do that? In the sense, I mean, has terrorism been dealt a major dent or a blow as a result of the surgical strike? It was certainly dealt a major blow and it is, this was a very strong message as Ambassador Sharma has put it. <clears throat> but in, in a larger perspective, it hasn't really changed their approach or tactics. They may have become more careful. They may have taken the launch pads a little further distance back. But actually, the process of infiltration, the attempts to infiltrate have continued. In fact, factually, the figures have uh, rather increased. In 2017, there were about 300 uh, infiltration attempts. Uh, this year, again, uh, there have been, I think, 46 to 50 infiltrations. Just to add to that, there were several ceasefire violations yes, as well. Yes, the ceasefire violations have gone up astronomically from a uh, figure of about 100 or so. It's now 800. So the thing is, we have to understand the psyche of the Pakistan army. If uh, we try to 
show that we can browbeat them by certain macho actions, uh, it will have only limited impact because no army leadership in Pakistan can afford to be seen to their own domestic constituency as being weak, weak in yeah. standing against India because that has been the raison d'etre of their, you know, superiority in the Pakistan society which has enabled them to garner all the uh, assets, perks, privileges uh, and a position which, you know, projects them as the protector uh, uh, of the institution and that the best institution that is available today and is responsible for the survival of Pakistan as a nation. On, so all this they can't be afford to stake. do that no, because no. on the other hand they have Afghanistan as well. The other aspect is you see uh, uh, an eyeball to eyeball confrontation along the border ultimately does not achieve much because the areas that are affected by their fighting, uh, you know, firing on our side, uh, these are populations which have, which are living on the border they are hindu population which have come across once upon a time before part or after partition and uh, their life is completely disrupted by this type of firing and they do this very deliberately to affect the civilian areas so in overall terms i think it was a very strong deterrent message but uh, it has only had a tactical impact and the pakistanis first they denied it of course later on uh, there have been reports, even in Pakistani media, acknowledging some burials of terrorists, etc., of the jaish e mohammed and, and the Lashkar. But uh, overall, they tried to cover it up, and uh, they haven't really uh, changed their tactics of trying to bleed us uh, in the manner that they were doing. You know, that's a very, valid, very important point that you've raised. You know, General, at the end of the day, the, tactical, uh, the surgical strike was a tactical one. It was successful. It was carried out well. Kudos to the army and everyone involved in, in this particular, uh, you know, surgical strike. But at the end of the day, Pakistan has not learnt its lessons. It continues to use the same kind of tactics and probably even more so uh, since the surgical strike. That having been said, okay. how do we deal with Pakistan? You know, first of all, I just want to clarify this in turn that, you know, that it was done after you have got Pathan Court and Udi. You know, whenever they are coming and attacking you, it is one-sided. They are attacking and you are a defender. So therefore, in this surgical style, you have told your intent. You have told that if you come and strike like this, we are going to hit you where it hurts you maximum. So to that extent, we have achieved that there are no action of this nature which has taken place after 2016. So please understand that strategically we have achieved. As far as ceasefire violation of line of control is concerned, it is mutual. So we are seeing it that this violation has taken place from Pakistan side, we have also responded equally well, possibly slightly higher. Understand that we have a larger country, economically much more stronger, better weapon system. In case if they resort to a motor firing, we resort to a artillery firing. And therefore, the damage to that side is much more. As far as, uh, you know, the reason as to why, you know, Pakistan army has not accepted what has happened, there are two main reasons. One is that Rahil Sharif, who was then the uh, chief of army, was retiring in the next two, three months. He did not want to go as a disgrace phase. So therefore, they know. Second thing is, time and again, they are saying there is no cross-border terrorism. Whatever is happening in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, it is indigenous. We are not sending any terrorists. When we have killed 80 to 90 terrorists in launch pad along with the army personnel, how do they justify? What were they doing? Why they were three to four kilometers from the line of control? So therefore, their life would have come out. So they conveniently has denied it until unless the press but, has come out you know, and General, told. But after these videos, after these video clips have come to the forefront Very and difficult. come to the public, can, can Pakistan continue to deny that the surgical Absolutely strikes took place? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. In fact, that's what I was thinking. It. This videos, you know, myth is over. Now they cannot say this has not happened. To me, it looks like that we could have even done it much earlier. After we have conducted this operation, it does not have any strategic importance. It only gives how bunkers were destroyed and all. Okay. To make since, it, we since could we have... Since we are here, General, since we are here, will there be another surgical strike? Is India ready to carry out another strike like this? India is a strategically a very strong country. What will be its next move, we, we can't even predict. But let me tell you, the intent was made very clear in the surgical strike. If there is a requirement of feeling that there is a requirement of doing something of that nature, there are many other methods of overt and covert, including you can utilize UAV drones as well as a satellite. Therefore, sure. India possibly has already given an intent. The 
basically nuclear bogey of Pakistani was exposed. To me, it looks like that surgical strike may not be in this form, but it may be in any form. But the punishment will be given to Pakistan okay. if they resort to an Sorry action to like Kodi or, uh, or uh, Pathan Court. Sorry to cut you short. I've got limited uh, time on the program, so I'd like to get closing comments from the other two guests as well. You know, Ambassador, is this the best way to deal with Pakistan? You should see it. You should see it the other way around. What uh, uh, my friend uh, Mr. Rana described. The problem is that they are. Uh, the problem is quite complicated. You know, they 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 have been doing this for long years, and they they will come back again and again. So, if you had not done it, they would have been further encouraged uh, yeah. that look, we can continue with Yuri and Pathan Court, and so that in that sense. Uh, from time to time, a certain uh, fitting response, uh, I think, becomes uh, necessary. At the same time, other avenues have been tried. As you see, we, we tried uh, uh, ceasefire, we are trying, uh, and, and there are, uh, you know, attempts to uh, also start, uh, you know, some kind of a modus vivendi out of this situation. But uh, unless the Pakistani uh, faith in their... Uh, uh, you know, in their denials and their attacks uh, continues unshaken, uh, we'll have a problem. So I think it's required to shake their faith uh, in, in this, the, you know, in their impunity that they can carry on attacks on India and nothing will happen to them. Sure. Quick closing comment and, from you, uh, Mr. Banerjee. Has to go Sorry down to, to cut you short, Ambassador. I'd like to get in a comment from Mr. Banerjee as well before I wrap up the program. Mr. Banerjee, is there a permanent solution to the problem? How do we deal with this issue? Well, the permanent solution is for Pakistan to realize that uh, it can't keep on uh, encouraging uh, such elements, non-state actors, and uh, who sometimes turn inwards and start uh, hitting at their own society. And this is beginning to happen more and more now in Pakistan. So it is leading to introspection in their own civil society. In fact, that is why I am a little intrigued. I mean, the, the timing intrigues me a little bit because now Pakistan is going for an election and there is no... Uh, political leadership which is certain to emerge and uh, also the uh, army has not been uh, you know uh, reacting to uh, the disclosures or even the media in Pakistan has decided to take it in the stride focus more on the political situation domestic political situation there which is the election so there's great deal of uncertainty there so at the moment uh, I would think that the main uh, purpose of the timing of the disclosure is more uh, in the domestic context in India. Uh, so, uh, to that extent, it is a sort of a, a limited utility as far as I can see. And it may not really impact on making Pakistan change uh, its uh, approach. For sure. that, we will have to wait and uh, uh, let the realization sink, sink in there itself in their own uh, civil society. All right. All right, on that note then, I'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.